Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the third part in a video series that I'm doing about managing visual effects in editorial, in particular on a work in progress short film that I'm currently working on and I'm showing how to manage some of the workflow to keep everything organized even while I'm still editing the show. So in the first video, I talked about putting VFX descriptions on screen. In the second video, I talked about how to create reliable VFX numbers and some of the best practices for creating VFX numbers or VFX IDs. And in this video, we're going to talk about how we can put a really reliable solid frame count on screen in a way that is functional and easy to manage. Now, depending on the nonlinear editor that you're using, there'll be a really different workflow for how to do this because they all use different tools to generate frame counts. So I find in Avid Media Composer that the timecode burn-in effect is really, really useful for doing frame counts, but it reads a lot of information from the tracks below it. And if I have kind of a complex series of tracks, as I do in certain cases, like here, for example, I have a temp effect that I've built for this security display. And as you can see, there are a number of different video tracks interacting to create this temp effect. If I just try to put a frame count on top of it, I find it's not always reliable because it's not always counting the frames of the correct part of the video. So I have a little bit of a workaround, a way to make a reliable frame count that works for each visual effect shot that I know is going to be rock solid and is not going to give me any strange readings. So the first thing I do is I create a new empty sequence and I'm just going to call it dummy frame count. Then I create like a bunch of black and you can do that really easily with the title tool. I just open up the title tool. I say like, make it a video background only, close that up click save. I'm going to call it black. Okay, so now I have a clip of black and I'm just going to throw that down on the timeline. And the reason you need that is because you need to be able to have some kind of something in the video track in order to be able to add the generator effect on top, which I'm going to put on the track above. So I'm going to throw the timecode burn-in effect down. It's telling me time code. I'm going to say, don't give me time code, give me frames. So I'm going to change the setting in here to frames. And I'm going to tell it local frame count. And I'm going to say, start counting at one. And then I'm going to put it in a position that I like. So it's probably going to be over here somewhere because I know that that's the lower right of the frame is where I put my VFX numbers. So it's probably where I'm going to put my count as well. So I'll put it somewhere around there and click OK. So now I have a sequence where the frame count starts at one and it just like goes for a really long time, like much longer than I'll ever need, much longer than any of my VFX shots actually are in my show. And then I'm just gonna do a mix down. I'm gonna select everything. Actually, I don't need the audio, so I'm gonna delete the audio tracks. And I'm just gonna do a video mix down. And I'm gonna click okay and it's gonna create a video mix down of this really long black track that just has a little number in the corner that counts up from one. So now my mix down is done. Okay, so if I load it up here in my source monitor, it's just one big video file that starts with one and just counts up. There it goes, all the way to like 11,000, which is much more than I'll need for any of the shots that in this particular film. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that to put on top of each visual effects shot on my timeline so that it can create a really stable frame count. Here's my sequence. I'm going to add a new video layer on top and I'm going to call it VFX count. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my video mix down. It starts at one. I'll just go to one of the shots as an example. Here's the jellyfish tank. Put an in point, put an out point, put it down. There we go. But now we're like, oh, but it's the whole screen. It's covered up our screen with black. So now I'm just going to use a picture in picture effect to limit it to the bottom right corner. This is a little finicky, but once you've done it once, then it's done and you can apply the same effect on all the rest. So I'm just going to adjust the position a little bit because I just want it to work in conjunction with my other overlays that I'm using. So that's pretty much it. So now I have this dummy frame count that starts at one and that goes up in this case, in this shot to 204. And I'm literally just going to take that and copy it to the clipboard. And then I'm going to paste it every single time over every single VFX shot and make it as long or as short as it needs to be to fulfill each shot. And that's pretty much it. And again, it's a little tedious. Obviously, this work is tedious. Editors don't like doing it. Usually they get assistance to do it. 
And if you're an assistant, then hopefully you have a bit of patience because it takes some time. But it's really important to get all this right. It's really important to be very diligent. So this is what my timeline looks like when it's all done. Now, in this case, as I was doing the dummy frame count across the entire film, I realized that I would prefer to use the animat tool instead of the picture in picture tool which is why you can see that I've used the animat here. I also decided for various reasons to change the order of the tracks that I have. So it's all the same tracks that you saw in the previous section, but they're just in a slightly different order. So I have VFX notes, I have the VFX count, and I actually have two tracks of VFX count because I have a tricky shot, which I'll show you over here, where like one shot dissolves into another shot. Um, as you can see here on on the timeline on video one and two, there's a dissolve. So the VFX shots have to dissolve into each other, which means that one is still continuing while the other one starts. So if you look at the bottom right corner of the display here, I've indicated scene 16 shot one and it counts up. And then scene 17 shot one starts while 16 is still happening. So we have a double count going for both of those shots as they overlap. I just put two dummy frame counts, one on top of the other. This is another reason that it works really well to do the dummy frame count mixed down instead of just trying to use the effect on its own. So there were a couple of points where I used these dissolves, so I actually end up having two video tracks for the count. But that's fine. You can have more. You could have three or four or five. If you use the dummy frame count method, you'll never go wrong, and the effect will never accidentally read the wrong track, and there won't be any confusion about what's being counted. So this is pretty much where I'm going to leave off with this video. I'm continuing to work on this short film. And so as I go through the process, I hope that I can just put some more videos out. The next step that I will be taking very soon is managing the status of the VFX shots and displaying them clearly in the timeline. I hope to have a video out about that really soon, and I will put it in as part of this series when it's done. If you enjoyed this series, feel free to like, subscribe for some more videos. I do them as I'm able and when I come up with stuff that I think might be interesting or useful. If you have ideas of other things you'd like to see or other things you'd like to learn about, please shoot me a note in the comments and let me know.